हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे इज ट्वेंटी सिक्स ऑफ अक्टूबर एंड वेलकम टू द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर एनालिसिस डिस्कशन सो गाइज इन द टुडे इज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द इंटायर एनालिसिस ऑफ द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर वी विल सी ऑल द आर्टिकल्स एंड विल सी देयर बैकग्राउंड विल सी द कंसेप्ट दैट हैव बिन डिस्कस्ड एंड द वे फॉरवर्ड एज हाउ यू कैन यूज द कंसेप्ट इन द यू एग्जामिनेशन नाउ बिफोर मूविंग आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू दैट यू कैन डाउनलोड दस दिस एक्सप्लेनर पी in this explainer pdf i had uh, given the notes of all the articles that we have discussed this explainer pdf can be downloaded from the telegram channel the link for the telegram channel has been given in the description box moreover you can visit the telegram and can search there by typing thinking pilot by sahil and there you will find the telegram and, uh, channel and from there you can download these notes in the last we have also given the mains practice question that you can use now uh before moving on first of all let's see the overview of the entire newspaper in order to understand that which articles are important now first of all guys uh, the first article rishi sunak becomes britain's first non white prime minister now uh, guys one thing i want to tell you very clearly that on this particular topic there will be the hundreds and thousands of the videos on the youtube that will be made and every video will say that this is for the upsc examination but guys understand this particular thing in the upsc examination the questions on to the contemporary leaders and their profile okay their profile it is not asked is it clear so guys the contemporary leaders uh, leaders and their personal profiles are not important for the exam but this is something that we find that the person of indian origin has become the prime minister so we can expect that there will be further enhancement of the ties between the india and uk anyhow india and uk are negotiating the free trade agreement by the name of btia now the deadline was was that by the dipavali this btia that is the free trade agreement between india and britain was to be finalized but it has not happened but now we expect that these particular things will be moving on fast now again i am telling this particular thing that the profile of mr rishi sunak for upsc examination is not that much important guys understand that then after that moving on uh the kerala governor issues noticed notices to two more vcs now uh, from the past few days guys this is the issue that is coming into the news repeatedly that the kerala governor has uh, basically the kerala governor has is having a tussle with the chief minister and the council of minister okay and in this particular direction we find this particular thing that there are certain constitutional challenges also that have come in this particular direction okay then guys moving on however you don't need to track every day detail fine then guys moving on uh, with no road access it's touch and go for the sick in ap tribal region so with respect to the case study for ethics gs paper number 4 we'll see this particular article then guys moving on city breathes its cleanest post dipavali air in the 8 years okay so we have we are taking every day one article because it is coming every day in the news that how the delhi becomes the gas chamber around the month of the october and november because of the multiple things that is the stubble burning at the same time there is a festival of dipavali then the geographical conditions are such that the wind movement okay or the wind velocity becomes very much slow so these particular things exacerbate the pollution problem but now the uh, dipavali has uh, cleanest air now uh, guys understand this particular thing that multiple factors have been important in this particular directions multiple factors have been there number one factor is that the festival of diwali was little bit earlier this year and still the the, the, the environment was warm the wind was the air was not very much cold so it did not settled around the ground then there was a favorable winds condition that was there and then thirdly guys there was the complete ban on the firecracker bursting so all these things have uh, played along and there is a clean air that we see okay then guys moving on after that in this particular direction uh, as we move fine here we see one particular article girl found injured at up and people are recording video so with respect to the ethics the topic of uh, human values we'll see this particular topic then moving on uh, in other other articles are not very much important with respect to the examination okay so regional issues etc are there into the city and the regional section then coming to the editorial page fine now editorial the first article short or long stay uh, brexit britain's challenge remains so we'll see this particular article with respect to exam a renewable energy revolution so the article is talking about some of the sustainable solutions for the winter problem in the north india we'll see this article then uh, ending dominance so guys this particular article talks about the recent controversy between the google and the cci okay we'll see this particular article then one man rule so the article talks about the third term of the xi jin 
Jinping that has started. Now, guys, the Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping has chosen his allies. He he has chosen his allies. Now, understand this particular thing that, guys, when we talk about the Xi Jinping, okay, Xi Jinping has consolidated his power, and even that much power was not consolidated even during the time of the Mao Zedong. Okay, so basically, the Xi Xi Jinping's. Xi Jinping's rivals, Xi Jinping's allies, etc. They have been mentioned here. Okay. Uh, then moving on, betting on change and American dream. So this particular article is talking about that how the USA is very much interested in the regime change in the different countries, for example, in Iran, China. Now, uh, the article doesn't contain much of a substance with respect to the UPSC because when we talk about guys, the international relation or international issues, the issues which have an impact on India or Indian interest, that is something that is more important. Find a, th a thorny trust with the look-alike symbols, not important article, this is a political article. Then, TV dominates as new source despite poor level trust. We'll see this particular article briefly. Then, Ethiopia, its past and the current challenges, we'll see this particular article also. Does the presence of neutral umpires mitigate bias in the cricket so guys it is a peer study that has uh, been conducted okay then the UNSC members to pay tributes at 2611 memorial okay so guys the 2611 the terrorist attack that was there so to to pay the tribute the UNSC members will be visiting okay then moving on after that guys uh, family histories professional graphs lie intertwined in the service of the supreme court so the article talks about that the, uh, the 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 50th cgi 50th cgi and the the justice nagaratna who will become the cgi in 2027 so their family history okay fine now guys when we talk about the dy chandrachud okay so justice chandrachud's father was also the cgi okay so there that links and their uh, family history is being explained here not very much important Rishi's rise triggers a war of words back in India. Guys, understand, no need to go and follow this particular article, how the BJP is defining itself by citing assistant of Abdul Kalam um, um, and all such kind of a things. Fine. Then, moving on in this particular direction. After that, uh, Jay Shankar holds the talks with the bilateral relations with Britain's foreign secretary. So, this was a telephonic call and uh, the, the details as what was discussed are not out there. Moreover, no need to track every telephonic call, every video call that is happening. Broad themes are something that you need to understand. Okay. So, guys, every class, the purpose to show you this newspaper overview is only one. To make you understand that which articles are actually important. Sometimes, some of the articles we don't even glaze we think that they are not important but actually they are a very important case studies or very important examples that can be directly be used and sometimes we are just unnecessarily following most of the articles which will not be having any importance for our examination so you need to understand this particular art that how to how to decipher which articles are important okay then moving on after that guys burning of fossil fuels killed over 3 lakh Indians now this is a Lancet study that has been released so we'll see the findings of this particular study fine indian envoy meets kenyan president over abduction of two men etc not important the focus on india uk ties as sunak becomes the british prime minister so i already told you that now the focus now there might be a possibility that the relations between the india and uk will further be improved okay now uh, the basically the personal history of the mr rishi sunak is being explained here okay uh, that in 2015 he was elected as a conservative mp from richmond yorkshire okay if you have a personal interest you can read this particular thing but for ups examination fine not very much important then moving on russia is performing secret work at uh, zaporizhia plant says ukraine's nuclear agency now, uh, basically, as the Russia-Ukraine war is going on, Russia has taken over certain key assets in Ukraine, including the nuclear plants. Now, the Ukraine has a kind of an apprehension that these nuclear plants, Russia is doing certain activities which might bring some nuclear meltdown or a kind of a nuclear warfare can be started by the Russia. Okay, moving on. Okay, uh, then India's export to China growing faster than inbound shipments. So, we'll see this particular article with respect to the India-China trade relations. Okay, then USHA is 25% rise in appliance sales, the corporate trends, etc. Not very much important. And then we have the sports page. Okay. So that is all guys about the overview of the entire newspaper and now let's discuss all the relevant articles which are important for our exam one by one in the detail. Now uh, before starting up we'll be taking the GS quotation in every class I give you one GS code that can be complemented with one of your paper either paper 1, 2, 3 or 4 or with the essay. So today we'll take the quotation from LXSD Talkville. 
So Alexis de Tocqueville says, nothing is more wonderful than the art of being free. But nothing is harder to learn how to use that freedom. So guys, when we talk about the freedom, when we talk about the liberty, freedom, the liberty, they are the core attributes of a democracy. And why people aspire for a democracy? Because a democracy gives you, gives you the widest possible freedom and liberty. So to be free, it is the best thing that can happen. But at the same time, when we are free, we think that we are absolutely free. Our freedom, our liberty, we take it as a license. But no, we don't have freedom or the liberty as an as an absolute concept. Rather, there are the reasonable restrictions that will be there. So we always need to learn that how to use our freedom, how to use our liberty. We should not use our freedom in such a way that it brings the obstacles for other people's freedom. Okay. So to have freedom and to be responsible as how to use that freedom, it is very, very important. So this is about the GS quotation. Now this quotation can be very effectively be used in the GS paper number two as well as GS paper number four ethics moreover in the essays also such kind of ideas can be used fine because when we talk about the essays there are a large number of essays that have been asked onto the concept of democracy and liberties equality etc now taking up the first article so the first article guys the Ethiopia its past and the current challenges now this article talks about the Ethiopian uh, uh, Ethiopian crisis that is going on since 2020. Now, understand this particular thing. Uh, guys, many number of times you ask one question that do we need to read the article again after reading the synoptic notes? So guys, one thing I want to tell you that when I am giving you the synoptic notes, I am giving you only that particular thing which is relevant and in the synoptic notes i am also taking the references from the other newspapers also for example indian express hindustan times times of india uh, other newspapers also now i will not suggest you to read this article today specifically why because this article is talking about the ancient history of the ethiopia the political the internal political crisis that is going on and that is actually not important for ups examination so i had given you a very crisp summary for which we have taken certain references from BBC as well as Al Jazeera. So today I will not suggest you to read this particular article because many unnecessary information has been given. Now let's see this particular article and from the very scratch we are going to discuss it. Okay. Now this particular article we'll see with respect to the GS paper number two, GS paper number two, international, international issues, international issues. And in these international issues, what role India is playing, this is something that we are going to see. Moreover, guys, with respect to the prelims examination also, with respect to the prelims examination also, we will see certain of the facts in this particular article because there are the mapping questions every year, three to four mapping questions that are coming. So that also we'll see. Okay, now uh, let's take this particular article. First of all, guys, first of all, uh, if you uh, focus here, I had given you the map. Now in this particular map, first of all, we will be seeing some of the basic mapping information and after that particular information, we will be going in the detail. Now, here you have the map of the Ethiopia. Here we have Ethiopia. First of all, let's see the neighbors of the Ethiopia. So guys, who are the neighbor of Ethiopia? Number one, we will start from 12 o'clock. So 12 o'clock, we have Eritrea. Okay. Then we have Djibouti, Eritrea, Djibouti. Let me use a thicker pen. Okay. So Eritrea, Djibouti. Then there is a Somalia. After that, we have Kenya. Okay. Then guys, there is a South Sudan. And here is Sudan. Okay, so all these are the neighbors of the yeah, Ethiopia, first of all. Now, guys, there are some other of locations also. So here, here we have the Red Sea. Fine. So there is Red Sea. Fine. This is the Red Sea. And then we have here the Gulf of Eden. Just a minute. So here we have the Gulf of Eden. Gulf of Eden. Fine. So these are some of the important mapping points. Now, uh, first of all, within the Ethiopia, you need to remember that this is the northern part of the Ethiopia. This is the region of Tigray. Okay. And this Tigray region is something which we will be seeing again and again because this is the region where there is some conflict that lies. Okay. So basically, right now what is happening in the Ethiopia? In Ethiopia, a kind of a war is going on between two groups. Now, who are these two groups? First of all, there is the Ethiopian military 
there is certain of the ethnic militias okay ethnic militias then there are the troops from the irteria so i told you that at 12 o'clock we have irteria so on one hand these are the one group where the military of ethiopia is there fine some ethnic militias are there and then the irterian troops are there and on another hand there is the tigray people's liberation front which is called as the tplf now tplf is up was a political is a political party within the ethiopia and it has developed certain of the differences between the ethiopia's government and because of that particular thing ethiopia's government and the tplf are fighting a kind of a internal war now let's understand in detail that why this particular controversy is going on so basically guys when we talk about the tplf okay the party which is fighting the war with the ethiopian government this particular organization was born in 1970 as a small militia now at that point of a time guys the ethiopia was being ruled by the marxist military dictatorship now as this military dictatorship was there the rights were not given to the people and this military dictatorship was ruling with a kind of an iron fist so therefore this tplf was born now tplf was actually successful as in 1991 the military dictatorship in the ethiopia was removed particularly because of the activities and the efforts that were made by the tplf okay and after that the tplf is in power through a ruling coalition now what happened tplf installed a system in the ethiopia in 1994 and in this particular system it was provided that there will be a federal system of government in the ethiopia and in this particular thing in the government of the ethiopia different different ethnic groups will be sending their representatives so when we talk about ethiopia guys ethiopia it is it is made up of 10 regions it is made up of 10 regions and in different different regions different different ethnic groups dominate so every ethnic group will have some of the representation in the government and the tplf was the tplf created a kind of a coalition with many of the ethnic groups and tplf became a dominant faction within the government of ethiopia after 1991 okay after 1991 now when we talk about ethiopia guys actually during the post 1991 when tplf was dominant ethiopia became a prosperous country it developed a deep relations with the usa development came there but at the same time tplf was accused that they have uh, it was accused that they have uh, they have many number of times were not very much considerate on to the human rights the level of democracy was not very much effective freedom of speech and expression was not given to the people dissent was not being tolerated so tplf was criticized also because of these particular things now at the times there have been the protest against tl tplf also as the protest were increasing what happened in 2018 there was an important moment came when the abi ahmed when the abi ahmed became when mr abi ahmed became the prime minister of ethiopia now tplf thought that the mr abi ahmed will support tplf as the other prime ministers have supported the tplf in the past but mr abi ahmed has his own plans now what happened mr abi ahmed he liberalized the politics and he was very much determined to remove reduce the clout of the tplf now the abi ahmed created a new party that is the prosperity party and in this particular prosperity party there was a coalition that was there now the abi ahmed he wanted he wanted to remove he wanted to reduce the tplf's tplf's domination from this particular tigray region guys the most of the power was controlled by the tigray region only now what happened what happened first when mr abi ahmed became the prime minister he actually resolved a boundary dispute that was going on with the irteria okay so if you remember if you remember here in the map we have seen that there is irteria who is the neighbor of the tigre uh, neighbor of the ethiopia now when this particular uh, boundary dispute was solved it led to it 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 led to Uh, it led to normalization of the diplomatic relations but actually the tplf was not happy with that tplf was not much happy with that see this thing basically guys when we talk about this is the region of tigray here there is a irteria so as the boundary dispute is going on so obviously the tigray 
obviously that uh, obviously the tplf tplf will be the major stakeholder and as basically this uh, agreement has been sound there are some of the the uh, ltr actually got some of the benefit in terms of the land that they got and because of that the tplf was not happy now because of this particular thing mr ab ahmed also won the nobel prize nobel prize for peace in 2019 but i told you tplf was not happy now after this particular thing what happened in 2020 there was another problem that came now this was the time when the covid 19 pandemic was going on and because of that particular thing the elections could not be conducted and it was ordered by the ethiopian government that the elections will not be conducted but what happened then the tplf they conducted their own regional elections even when the government has told them not to do so this particular thing increased the further tensions between the tigray tplf and the government because of that particular thing the ab ahmed suspended the ties with the tigray region they also cut down their funding and many of the political leaders they were uh, many of the political leaders they were either jailed or on them the sanctions were imposed okay now as the tensions were increasing what happened the tigray the the forces for of the tigray and the tplf they were accused that they have attacked the army base and they have stolen the weapons from there now this was a moment when the ab ahmed said that they have crossed a red line and after that particular thing the war started between the ethiopian government and the tplf and the tigray forces that has started and since then this particular war is ongoing and now nearly 2 years have happened that this war is going on now why this particular ethiopian war has now come into the news because guys recently that is on 24th of 24th of october there is a peace process that have been started between the ethiopian government and the tplf and tigray forces so the african union they had started a peace talks between ethiopian government and the tigray forces now we need to see that how these particular these particular peace talks will be culminating and whether this uh, uh, dispute that has started will get normalized or not now when we talk about this ethiopian crisis let's understand this particular thing that how the china and india are involved in this particular thing first of all china china is present into the ethiopia and china is majorly present in the infrastructural projects for example it is buildings it, it it is building the it is building the roads it is building the bridges and many of the public utility services are also built being built by the china even a rail link is being created now if you see if you'll observe one particular thing guys actually actually the ethiopia Ethiopia is not having the direct connectivity with the sea with the water so therefore the Ethiopia needs to have the rail connectivity and a port connectivity and in this particular direction the rail linking and the port access is being provided by the China now you see this thing basically i have told you earlier also that china is very much interested in the development of africa and many of the eastern european and eurasian countries why because there is one particular word that we use in the context of the china that is debt trap diplomacy debt debt trap diplomacy now what is this debt trap diplomacy guys understand this particular thing that the china is running an ambitious project that is the bri belt and road in uh, belt and road initiative okay now under the bri china wants to get the connectivity with the Euro eurasian economies as well as the africa now because of that particular thing china is giving a highly subsidized loans to these countries and china is very mindful that even sometimes china is giving loans which are far more than the paying capacity of these countries but china why it is giving them because china wants to take over their strategic assets because china is now looking to become the superpower and to be the superpower china needs to have its military bases china needs to have the strategic assets on to the key locations in the world now if we see this debt trap diplomacy i want to give you one very clear example of this for example you take the sri lanka now the sri lanka has been given a lot of debt by the china and when the sri lanka was not able to pay back that particular debt what happened china took the sri lanka's hamban tota port for 99 year lease the hamban tota port of the sri lanka was taken for a lease for the 99 years 
in this particular way the sri lanka's strategic asset has been taken over by the china in this particular direction only the china is very much interested in building up the key assets in the african and eurasian countries okay that is something that is happening and china is doing the same thing in the ethiopia china on the face of it says that we are doing it to build the capacity but actually there is a in a, there is a kind of a vested interest of china also now when we talk about india india is also present into the ethiopia and india's presence is different india rather than focusing on infrastructure is investing into the human resource building in ethiopia so india has invested into the education services majorly education services health etc that is the, for, the this is something which has been the focus of india so guys this is something now when we talk about the ethiopia region guys you see this particular thing thus this particular region of africa is very much important because i told you that here is the gulf of eden then there is a red sea is it clear and when we talk about guys the connectivity with the europe okay this particular region is very much important okay now particularly when we talk about the somalia region in the somalia region there is already the problem of piracy and this piracy has impacted the merchandise trade of india so if this particular region will become more instable then guys what will happen the sea lanes of the trade will get impacted because of the instability so therefore now as we talk about india india is aspiring to be the exporting power I india is trying to be the exporting power and for that particular thing the secure sea lanes are always in the interest of india so therefore the stability into the africa as well as in the horn of africa is very much important okay so this is something guys that is uh, that therefore that the india is considered uh, uh, that india is very much interested now you might already be knowing this particular thing that for example we have red sea now that this particular red sea okay post red sea there is this uh, there is uh, suez canal suez canal okay and post suez canal there is mediterranean suez uh, post suez canal there is mediterranean and through the mediterranean we get the accessibility to the europe so therefore the region around red sea the region around gulf of aden is very very important okay and the stability needs to be there so this is guys all about this particular article and these are all the these are all the implications of this particular issue i hope that you have understood now we'll move to the next article okay <laughs> now uh, guys this particular article if you read just it you'll think that okay it is just a crime related news that has come and not very much important but no that is not the case in this particular article we'll try to learn a very important concept of ethics gs paper number 4 ethics gs paper number 4 now first of all let's know little bit about this particular development so you read it has been provided that girl found injured at a up government guest house and people are recording the videos now actually what happened actually what happened a girl went out to buy something okay and then she got injured actually the details are not there but we need to see this particular thing that what was the response of the people people were recording the videos now why such kind of thing happens okay so guys there is one concept that is the concept of bystander apathy there is a concept of bystander apathy now before understanding the bystander apathy i need to explain you little bit about the apathy apathy now apathy it is a state of indifference okay sometimes people are not very much considerate about other persons problems other persons suffering and when the people are not moved by other people's problem when the people are indifferent that state of indifference is called as apathy many number of times you find that this apathy is there in the people and even in the bureaucracy as a whole this kind of an apathy prevails even there is a word for that that is the bureaucratic apathy what is bureaucratic apathy many number of times you find this thing that there are problems which the people are facing but the bureaucracy is not very much considerate about that i'll give you one more example in the next article even the last year the chief justice of india uh, justice nv raman at that point of a time last year he said that in india the bureaucracy has developed the bureaucratic inertia the bureaucracy has developed the bureaucratic inertia and this bureaucratic inertia is nothing but the bureaucratic apathy only 
सो एपैथी इज अ स्टेट ऑफ इन डिफरेंस वे आर यू आर नॉट कंसर्न अबाउट अदर पीपल्स सफरिंग अदर पीपल्स प्रॉब्लम ओके नाउ विद इन द अपैथी देर इज वन पर्टिकुलर टाइप ऑफ अपैथी दैट इज द बाय स्टैंडर अपैथी नाउ बाय स्टैंडर अपैथी इज अ फिनोमिना वेन पीपल सी अन अदर पर्सन इज इज इन क्राइसिस बट दे डोंट टेक एनी इनिशिएटिव दे डोंट कॉल एम्बुलेंस ऑन और दे डोंट टेक दैट पर्टिकुलर पर्सन टू हॉस्पिटल रादर दे स्टार्ट क्लिकिंग द फोटोग्राफ्स दे स्टार्ट मेकिंग द वीडियो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर बाय स्टैंडर अपैथी गाइज एक्चुअली वी फाइंड दिस थिंग दैट मैनी नंबर ऑफ पीपल मैनी पीपल आर डाइंग बिकॉज ऑफ द एक्सीडेंट्स according to the national crime record bureau ncrb according to the ncrb every year 1.5 lakh people 1.5 lakh people die because of the road accidents now many of the people many of the people could be saved if they are provided the medical assistance in that particular time so guys when a person is struck in an accident and after that particular thing the time is called as the golden hour so in the golden hours if the medical assistance is not being given there will be very high fatality okay now earlier earlier guys many people were not helping these people to reach the hospitals because they were concerned that they will then be dragged in some legal proceeding or all such kind of a thing and for that particular thing there are good samaritans guideline that has already been issued good samaritans guideline good samaritans guideline now what are these good samaritan guideline as per this if anybody is helping another person to reach hospital if another person has got an accident then that person will not be questioned that particular person will not be legally harassed so this good samaritan guidelines have already been issued on the Uh, uh, had already been issued onto the basis of supreme court judgment but still people are not helping because of this bystander apathy now how this bystander apathy can be reduced this bystander apathy can only be reduced by inter inculcating the positive values the positive values guys i want to tell you it is a very beautiful line it is a very beautiful line it is being said that see if there is an empty pot if there is an empty pot the vacuum of that empty pot can never be removed you just turn that empty pot upside down okay the vacuum will never be removed okay or the gap can never be removed only that gap can be removed by filling that with water or by filling that with some another thing some another kind of a liquid so when there are the negative gaps there are these negative gaps can only be fulfilled by giving the positive values so this apathy can only be dealt by can only be dealt by giving the positive value such as the empathy and compassion empathy and compassion what is empathy empathy it is to help uh, empathy it is to feel another person's pain to uh, experience another person's sufferings from their point of view and the next is the compassion the next is the compassion what is compassion guys compassion is once you have sensed another person's pain then helping that particular person actively that is compassion okay so you find a person that a person is sitting on the road the person is hungry the person is not having the proper clothing and shivering in the cold feeling that particular person's pain sensing that person's pain is empathy and helping that actually giving that person food is compassion so only these positive values that is the empathy and compassion can take can remove the apathy and such bystander apathies so this is guys about this particular topic so this is a, a kind of an important concept in the ethics gs paper number 4 particularly the topic number 1 that is the ethics and human interface so that is about it and now we'll move to the next article with no road access it's touch and go for the sick in ap tribal region so this is also a, a kind of a case study that we can see here now first of all let me tell you let me tell you that what has happened and after that we'll see this case study so basically there is one district in the andhra pradesh that is aluri aluri sitarama raju now this district into the andhra pradesh okay it has not been connected with the roads fine there are the tribal hamlets that are there as they are not connected there is high imr there is high uh, mmr maternal mortality rate fine now just li let's read little bit what the article reads <clears throat> so even after 75 years of independence so we are now following now we are celebrating the azadi ka amrit mahotsav and the next 75 years will be sorry next 25 years will be the amrit kal so azadi ka amrit mahotsav and the next 25 years are the amrit kal even now we find that there are many of the vill villages fine which are not connected by the roads as per the official 
रिकॉर्ड्स बाय द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ आंध्र प्रदेश इन टू दिस ए एस आर डिस्ट्रिक्ट देर आर नाइन हंड्रेड ट्राइबल हैबिटेशन दैट आर येट टू गेट एनी फॉर्म ऑफ द रोड कनेक्टिविटी एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर थिंग वट इज हैपनिंग वेन अ पर्स वेन अ वेमेन इज गेटिंग प्रेगनेंट द पीपल हैज टू लिटरली वॉक टू द primary health care uh, center public health care center which is sometimes as far as 20 kilometers away so many number of times when the women or the pregnant women are in labor they have to reach there which take 3 to 4 hours and that rds journey it is leading to high imr it is leading to high mmr and because of that particular thing the socio indicators of this particular district are very much poor okay now uh, basically why the road connectivity has not been there in this particular region it is because of the multiple reasons number one is the maoist threat so this particular region has a considerable maoist threat and they have always opposed any developmental activity into the region if any road building uh, uh, activity was done that was opposed okay another tussle is between another hurdle is the tussle between the district administration and the forest department fine now you know this particular thing that the forest there are the forest conservation laws that are there and because of the forest conservation laws the developmental activities are many number of times they are not allowed okay so the forest department and the district administration they are having that tussle now because of this particular thing who is getting suffered the poor people are suffering now guys in this particular direction first of all first of all immediately what should be done <coughs> there is pradhan mantri pradhan mantri सड़क योजना प्रधानमंत्री ग्रामीण सड़क योजना प्रधानमंत्री ग्रामीण सड़क योजना नाउ द प्रधानमंत्री ग्रामीण सड़क योजना एम्स टू प्रोवाइड द ऑल वेदर रोड कनेक्टिविटी टू द अनकनेक्टेड विलेजेस ओके नाउ द प्रधानमंत्री ग्राम सड़क योजना is in genesis from for more than 20 years but guys up till now the pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana seems that it has not been very much successful because there are so many of the tribal hamlets which have not been connected so there is a focus that now particularly tribal hamlets should be emphasized more under the pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana moreover guys at the same time at the same time the enforcement agencies need to be really proactive as the maoist threat which has kept the development away this is something that is needed to be tackled immediately guys understand understand this particular thing that when we talk about when we talk about the problem such as the naxalism in india the problem such as the naxalism left wing extremism now these particular problems have emerged because the developmental gap has been there now you see this particular thing when we talk about the naxalites they say that their war is of jal jangal and zameen they say that their war is of jal जंगल एंड जमीन ओके बट यू सी दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट मेनी नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स मेनी नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स so their war is of jal jangal and zameen they want to say they say that we want to conserve this particular thing but often these wars are getting exacerbated the naxalite activity is getting exacerbated because of the developmental gap that is also there is it clear because of this because of this particular thing they are getting the recruits and all such kind of things so therefore we need to bring the systemic and balanced development we should not impose development on that balanced development is to be brought so therefore the administration needs to be very much proactive now guys in order to provide connectivity what can be done pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana can be used the funds under the corporate social responsibility can be used so under the section 135 under the section 135 of the companies act 1935 okay csr contribution is to be given that can be used thirdly guys what can be done the crowd funding can be utilized if government is not dispensing the fund so we have the example of uh, uh, ias officer armstrong pame we have the example of the ias officer armstrong pame okay who is called as the miracle man okay miracle man armstrong pame has built a 100 km road 100 km people's road in the manipur by utilizing the crowd funding by the taking money from the people by taking the help from the people so such is officers have shown the way in the past okay so therefore the district administrators in this region also needs to learn from such officers okay this is something guys that can be suggested so that is all about this particular article and i hope that you have understood it and now we'll move to the next article okay now burning of fossil fuels killed over 3 lakh indians in 
okay so this is uh, the finding of the lensent report that has come okay now uh, guys uh, see this thing that i had given entire findings of this particular report here okay now this particular article first of all will be seen with respect to gs paper number 3 gs paper number 3 environment gs paper number 3 environment climate change and the impacts on health impacts on health because of the environment and climate change okay and as the health is in gs paper number 2 so therefore this topic can also be used in gs paper number 2 now see i tell you every num every time that always you need to make sure that you are complementing your uh, answers with some report some data some supreme court judgments etc so in this particular direction this is a very important reference that can be given in your answers okay now first of all what is the report the report is released by the lancet now lancet is one of the most reputed health journal okay so the name of the report is the lancet countdown on health and climate change report 2022 now as per this particular report it is being said that more than 3 lakh actually 3 lakh 30000 people have died in india due to exposure to pm particulate matter because of the fossil fuel combustion in 2020 so particulate matter pm these are very fine particles that are emitted when we are burning the uh, cow uh, when we are burning the cow dung cakes fossil fuels wood etc guys if i tell you guys even today large number of women in particularly from the poor households into the rural regions they are using the uh, biomass they are using the uh, so, so, uh, basically wood or cow dung cakes for their cooking and such kind of a things and because of that because of that thing the fine particulate matter pm1 or pm2.5 pm2.5 is emitted which leads to respiratory disease and because of that respiratory disease 3 lakh 30000 people more than that they have died who says that lancet report on health and climate change okay so reference is always a very important now according to the report they have said that when we talk about the urban centers 45% of urban centers are cl classified as moderately green or above which is good but guys this number needs to be much higher than that after that in this article has given some more very important uh, findings according to it this is that more than 16720 crore potential labor hours have been lost due to heat exposure and it is the income loss because of that it is equivalent to 5.4% of the india's gdp now you see this particular thing the heat exposures heat extremes they are becoming more and more with every coming year because of that thing the productivity of the people is declining and because of that particular productivity there is a 5.4% of equivalent loss of 5.4% equivalent gdp loss that has happened to india okay the next thing according to the article according to the report it is being provided that the duration of the growth season for maize has decreased by 2% and uh, the, the 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 duration for the rice and the winter wheat has decreased by 1% the growth season has decreased now you see this thing when we talk about india 54% of the people in india are directly and indirectly dependent on agriculture and as they are dependent on agriculture if the growth or the agricultural productivity will go down it will impact such a high peep such high number of people moreover often in india the food security is a very big challenge and to tackle the food security we need to make sure that the agricultural productivity is either is to be increased but here the agricultural productivity is declining particularly because of the climate change then next thing now this is something something very strong that the report has talked about and we can use it very effectively in the answer so report says that government are not focusing on the issue as much as required what it says it says that in 2019 fine right, in uh, in 2019 india had a net negative carbon price a net negative carbon price it indicates that government was effectively subsidizing fossil fuels you see this thing we need to charge a positive carbon price it means that if coal is being used if the carbon source is being used we need to charge more on that okay and we need to actually subsidize the renewable energy but what is happening india is doing opposite india is having the net negative carbon price it means that actually we are giving subsidies on to the coal on to the carbon based fuels it has been said that india allocated 34 billion us dollars or around 2 lakh 80000 crore fine okay <coughs> this is something that we have given as subsidies into the coal sectors and many such kind of a uh, such kind of a sectors it is equivalent to 37.5% of india's national health spending 
and then next it's being provided that when we talk about the households fine biomass accounted for 61 percent of the household energy in 2019 fossil fuels are accounting for 20 percent of the household energy so therefore the reliance on the fossil fuel biomass cow dung cakes wood etc for the household energy is very much high and it is it is 27 times higher than the who recommendation it is 27 times higher than the WHO recommendation and actually in we talk about rural areas it is 35 times higher. So this is actually this is actually that has happened. So I hope that you have understood this entire article and guys you see this thing that not only the findings are important but understanding the findings in that particular context is much more important and when we talk about the context how every finding is important and it is a fitting in this thing it is to be understood. Now we'll move to the next article. A renewable energy revolution rooted in agriculture. A renewable energy revolution rooted in agriculture. Now this particular article guys it is talking about the government's interventions that it has taken in uh, particularly into the North India to reduce the problem of the winter pollution. Okay. So this article will see with respect to the GS paper number 3. GS paper number 3 environment environment challenges related to pollution as well as the way forward also will take in this article now let's start with the article okay fine now uh, first of all understand this particular thing that uh, guys i have told you this background many number of times that the national green tribunal and the supreme court has multiple times referred that delhi becomes a gas chamber in the month of october and november because of the winter pollution that becomes a really big issue it violates the article number 21 right to life and personal liberty within the right to life right to clean air has been guaranteed and the governments have failed to tackle that particular issue even the last year i was referring to word bureaucratic apathy okay uh, so uh, bureaucratic apathy or bureaucratic inertia has been called as a reason for that particular thing by the cji last year fine now basically what has happened we have for this thing we have started a kind of a renewable energy revolution okay recently one case study i want to give and this particular case study you can use in your answers also what actually happened in the punjab in the punjab recently a renewable energy revolution has started what has happened first bioenergy plant has been started in punjab by a private company now this bioenergy plant will be producing the compressed biogas compressed biogas which can be used as an energy source and this cbg gas will be produced by using the paddy straw so basically what happens what happens in the month of the the month of the october it is the month when the paddy will be harvested the paddy will be harvested and as there will be the leftovers the paddy stubble will be there now okay just a minute let me use a different pen so basically around the month of october and november the paddy is harvested and after that the next crop that is the wheat wheat is to be sown now the period between the paddy and wheat is very much less okay so therefore what farmers do they simply burn this particular paddy and because of that the winter pollution problem exhibits into the north india so now this paddy straw is not needed to be burnt rather it can be converted into the compressed biogas so therefore what it is it is a win win situation okay we can get the energy and at the same time the farmers will be compensated for that stubble burning for that stubble which was like earlier the headache of the farmer now in this particular direction guys understand this particular thing that when we talk about this entire north indian region that is the region of punjab haryana and the western uttar pradesh to dispose this paddy stubble there is the uh, uh, there is an activity where it is put on the fire now because of that particular thing because of that particular thing what has happened the government has already constituted the caqm that is commission for air quality management into the national capital region and adjoining areas now this 
commission for air quality management has been given a specific mandate that they need to make sure that this double burning doesn't happens the farmer are given the alternatives that rather than going for stubble burning they can manage and they can dispose this particular stubble in a kind of a bio sustainable manner now for this particular thing guys there are actually two types of processes or two types of assistance that is being given to the farmer number one they are being given the in situ management assistance in situ management assistance in situ means that at the place where the stubble has got generated there only it can be managed it can be settled and the second is the ex situ second is the ex situ ex situ means that the stubble will be taken from that particular field and at some another location it will be tackled now let's discuss when we talk about the in situ management there is the activities that is the incorporation of paddy straw okay and the stubble in the soil using heavily subsidized machinery so happy seeders and many such kind of a machinery is being given and that machinery integrates that particular stubble in the soil only okay this is one i want to tell you one more also not mentioned in the article but we have discussed it earlier that is the pusa decomposer pusa decomposer now the pusa decomposer it is a form of a capsule which have been extracted by certain fungi and that particular capsule is to be converted in a liquid solution and that liquid solution will be fermented for 8 to 10 days and then it will th that liquid solution will be fermented and then it will be sprayed onto the stubble and within few days that stubble will be decomposed that stubble will be decomposed and it will automatically be getting reintegrated in that soil and when it will be absorbed into the soil it will improve the productivity and fertility of that particular soil so the pusa decomposer solution it is also a kind of an in situ management okay so you can please add this point separately then the second is the ex situ management ex situ means you take that paddy at some other place and uh, ha handle that particular thing for that particular thing number 1 there is uh, use of paddy straw for biomass power projects okay co firing in thermal power plants co firing in thermal power plants okay listen it very carefully few days back we have taken multiple articles on this co firing what is this co firing co firing means combustion of co firing it means combustion of two different types of materials at the same time now you see right now we have the coal fired power plants and i tell you if the data from the ministry of power around 51% of india's energy more than 51% of india's energy still comes from the thermal coal fired power plants now as we are using the coal in this in this what we can do we can use the we can use the biomass pellets now what are the biomass pellets biomass pellets are simply the stubble the stubble the stubble is converted in small small pellets and these small pellets can be burnt along with the coal so the pellet co firing with the coal it means that these pellets will be burnt with the coal now these pellets number one they have high calorific value second they produce very less ash they produce very less ash and third they also emit very less carbon emission okay moreover when we talk about the heat it has been said that 800 to 9 800 kgs of pellets they can give heat energy they can give the energy equivalent to 1000 kg of coal so they are more effective than the coal and in this particular direction already government has brought a kind of a uh, guideline government had said that it is mandatory that 5% biomass Uh, biomass pellet co firing is to be done it means that let's say that into a power plant if 100 kg coal is being burnt every hour then 5 kg out of that needs to be biomass pellet so 95 kg coal and 5 kg biomass pellet so 5% biomass pellet co firing has been made already mandatory so therefore therefore there can be these biomass can be converted in pellets and these pellets can be used into the thermal power plants this is ex situ management okay second is using this particular biomass for the second generation ethanol uh, ethanol manufacturing now you see this particular thing guys that already government is going forward with the ethanol blending and 20% ethanol blending in the petroleum is to be achieved by 2025 now what is ethanol blending so basically with the petrol with the petrol we can blend the ethanol we can blend the ethanol and when we'll blend the ethanol with the petrol okay number one the ethanol will not leave the carbon footprint secondly today we export we import a lot of crude oil from the other countries around 82% of india's energy requirements are met by the import okay so as we 
can blend the 20, we, we go for 20% ethanol blending, the reliance onto the imports will also get reduced. So this is something that can be done. Okay, now coming to the main point, actually for making the ethanol, you can use sugar cane, okay, you can use the corn, etc. But the second generation of the ethanol can be made by even using these paddy straws. So these paddy straw can be used for making the ethanol. And then this, this can be also be converted, these paddy straw can also be converted into the compressed biogas for which a plant has been started into the, into the Punjab. Moreover, these bio, these Stubbles can also be used as a fuel in industrial boilers, waste to energy, simply you can burn it, okay, and waste to energy. In packaging materials, they can be used. So these are all the accessory to ways by which this paddy can be handled. So this is guys a very, very important and I will suggest you, please fix this and please extract this PDF and use it in your notes directly, okay. Now, after that particular thing, there is a third way also to tackle this particular stubble burning problem. That is to generate the public awareness. So we need to generate the awareness into the people. We need to we need to sensitize the farmers that how this stubble burning is leading to the problem of pollution. Okay. However, understand this particular thing that as though we have done all this particular thing, we have done all this particular thing, but the reality is that still the crop residue burning is spreading. It is spreading now even to the rabi crops. It has not been very much effective. Now in this particular direction, in the past the Niti Ayog, Niti Ayog and FAO, that is the Food and Agriculture Organization, they had explored a, in 2019 they have done a study that how to tackle this problem of stubble burning. And in this particular direction, the FAO, FAO, it has published its studies and had said that we need to focus particularly on the Punjab region. Now understand this particular thing. According to the FAO study, it has been said that we need to develop a crop residue supply chain in Punjab. It means that number one, there needs to be the collection process that the stubble that has been generated to the fields, it's to be collected from the farmers. Then there needs to be the storage facility. Then there needs to be the final use of these rice straw for other productive services where it can be used. This straw can be used for making pellets. They can be used for making ethanol. They can be used for CBG that is the uh, compressed biogas plants. So this supply chain is needed to be built. It has been provided that actually, actually, I told you that it can be used for making the pellets, gas and all such kind of a things. Okay. Already, already government has provided that, uh, government has provided this uh, co-firing target of 5%. At the same time, one more issue is there that I want to tell you that what has happened recently, there is a 5% CBG production target also that the government has kept aside. Now, what is this CBG 5% CBG target? So government actually started a scheme by the name of Satat, S-T-A-T, okay, Satat scheme. Now the Satat scheme stands for Sustainable Alternative Towards Affordable Transportation. Okay, again I'll repeat, Sustainable Alternative Towards the Affordable Transportation. Under this, government had said that, see, transportation, it is leading to the vehicular emission. And these vehicular emission are a very big part of our carbon footprint. So how to make transportation more green? How to make transportation more sustainable? So for that particular thing, government provided in 2018, Okay. Now, by the way, let's discuss little bit of these things. Now, they are important for your prelims examination. So, for the prelims examination, now the questions onto the schemes, etc. are asked. So, in 2018, Satat was launched by Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas along with the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship and many oil marketing companies were also the partner. That is the Indian Oil Corporation Limited, Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited, Hindustan Petroleum Corporation Limited. And according to this Satat scheme, it is being provided that CBG, compressed biogas production plants are to be are to be developed and these CBG gas is to be used into the transportation. Now, there is a plan to roll out 5,000 CBG plants across the India, okay, in the phased manner. Okay, 250 plants are to be developed by 2020, 1,000 by 2022 and 5,000 plants by 2025. So, in a phased manner, 5,000 plants are to be developed under this Satat scheme. So, therefore, under the Satat scheme, this CBG, compressed biogas that is being developed, it can be used into the transportation sector. Now, how this particular thing will help? It will help on multiple fronts. Number one, number one, as this particular straw will be 
will be bought from the farmers it will improve increase the farmers income already government has taken the goal of doubling the farmers income by 2024 so the dulwai committee suggested that government needs to in, uh, double the farmers income by 2022 but government has increased the deadline to 2024 so it can help in doubling the farmers income number two it can help in tackling the problem of pollution number three it will build the entrepreneurship okay as these cbg plants pallet manufacturing plants ethanol plants will be will be taken by the young people so it will promote the entrepreneurship number four as these stubble and all such kind of a thing will be used into the transportation sector it will reduce the petroleum and the diesel consumption so the reliance on to the other countries will also be reduced so in all these particular factors it is going to help is it clear or not now at the same time guys at the same time guys when there is the organic of uh, basically when these uh, stubble are being integrated there in the soil only it is improving the fertility so this is all something it is helping so it will help in value chain fine it will provide the opportunity so therefore today we need to develop the facilities for collection and transportation and handling of this particular biomass so this is actually a win-win solution actually we don't need to see it is ent entirely as a problem rather it is an opportunity which needs to be leveraged okay so this is a resource that is getting wasted we need to tackle it sustainably so this is all about this particular article i hope that you have understood it and now we'll move to the next article short or long stay brexit britain's challenge remain okay now actually guys the article it is giving uh, it is having little bit of the abstract ideas and the ideas are particularly this that now as the uh, uh, mr rishi sunak has become the new prime minister of the britain he has to deal with the brexit challenge that is a very big issue in britain since 2016 okay now first of all now this particular article just we need to see with respect to general awareness on the international issues that is going on okay much important substance is not there only the important points that are there i have provided you here in the notes okay so basically uh, we are uh, we are celebrating a history now because rishi sunak has become the first person of color to become the prime minister of britain okay now when we talk about uh, mr rishi sunak his predecessor that pre predecessor that is listress the earlier prime minister okay she came to the she came to the prime ministership and very and in a very brief span of time she exited there also now the challenge for the listress okay the challenge for the rishi sunak okay and the challenge for the earlier prime minister that is the boris johnson it was same that how to deal with this brexit now when we talk about the brexit brexit means the exit of britain from european union brexit means the exit of U uh, britain from the european union guys when we talk about european union european union is a grouping of 27 countries which represent itself as a single economic block they have a common currency that is euro there are there is uh, basically this entire region is called as the Shenzhen zone you don't need to have visas in this particular region if you want to go from one country to another country okay so it is a kind of an economic union it is an economic union and britain was also the part of this economic union okay now the britain has exited from this economic union now in 2016 in 2016 a uk held a referendum uh, on its membership of the e european union the people were asked that whether the britain should continue in the european union or should exit and in that around 51.89 so around 52 percent people voted that the britain should leave the european union okay and the process got started but actually up till now the complete exit from the european union has not happened now understand this particular thing that when we talk about the brexit now little bit i want to go beyond this particular article and i want to tell you that why britain wanted to exit from this european union so britain has many of the problems because of this particular thing they are saying they are saying this particular thing that actually what has happened because there are no hard boundaries because there are the no hard boundaries what is happening a lot of goods from the other countries they enter into the britain and because of that particular thing britain's manufacturing sector it is facing a kind of a very tough competition second thing it has been provided that because of the because the britain was the part of the european union the britain has to mandatorily pay the billions and billions of the uh, uh, pounds every year okay uh, every year for the sustenance of this entire union okay so that particular challenge was there 
okay so therefore the britain exited from the european union and since then this particular process has not been completed it has been said that since 2016 britain has seen the four prime ministers okay and they all are trying to solve these ties the ties on trade trading financial legal bureaucratic cultural ties that are there with the european union and these ties had not completely been snapped till up till now basically it has been said that there is a four percent drop in productivity in 15 years that will come because of the brexit induced lockdown now you see this thing that as the brexit has happened the britain have exited britain will also we be losing a lot of markets will be losing a lot of trade that they were doing with the european union earlier so it will bring a kind of a four percent drop into the productivity in the next 15 years right now the britain is having its own challenges the inflation Fine, there is the cost of living which is increasing, National Health Services, NHS, it is in crisis. There are strike into the workers' union. Okay, so these are all the challenges that are there and all these particular challenges have to be dealt with, have to be dealt by the prime, new Prime Minister, Mr. Rishi Sunak, who has come. So, just you need to see the overview of this particular article. No need to go too much into the detail because how he will be dealing, will he be successful or not, that is something that we'll see now in the days too come so no need to go too much into the detail so that is all about it and now we'll move to the next article tv dominates as news source despite poor trust levels okay now what is this particular article guys so recently the report has uh, uh, thus a survey has been done by the lok niti a survey has done been has been done by the lok niti and in this particular survey it has been asked from the people that what is their source of media from where they get the news whether they get it from uh, from the newspapers or from the social media websites okay and how they trust on that particular news it has been said now few months a few weeks back actually there was a reuters survey also that was conducted okay not weeks actually i think four or three or four months back the reuters survey was also conducted and we have discussed also that Reuters survey okay in that also it was provided that how much people trust the news and from where they are getting the news okay now with the respect to the GS paper number two okay media okay we'll see this particular article okay now basically what is the survey the survey has been done by the Lok Niti Lok Niti program for center for the study of the developing societies okay in partnership with the uh, Conrad and an your stiffing okay now uh, just remember that remember it is a lok niti survey that's it okay now according to this particular survey they have given certain of the highlights according to the survey for example the proportion of indians who are accessing news through the various means so what is the preferable means by which the indians are consuming the news 71 percent of them consuming the news by the news channels okay and just 48 percent are consuming the news by reading the newspaper Okay, so many of the, the sources from where they're getting the news, it has been provided. Now, uh, all data is not very much important, just one or two data that is that we can use in our answers to complement and our answers, we'll see that only. Now, how much do the people trust the news disseminated through the different, different news media? How much people trust the news? Now, the people, they say that DD's news channel 34% people say that they trust these news channels okay now when we talk about the uh, when we talk about the news the people say that only 13% of the people say that the private news channels are showing them the true news 31% people will feel that the newspapers are showing them the true news okay so therefore the trust into the private news now if you see guys here 71% people, 71% people are consuming their news from the news channels, okay, and in that a high proportion is by the private news channels that are there, but the trust onto the private news channel is just 13%, so this is a kind of a dichotomy that people are consuming the news, but at the same time they are not trusting that same news, okay. Trust in information or news received from various social media platforms. So there is the highest trust in the news that is being received by the Twitter. Okay, and the news that is being received by the Instagram, Facebook, they Telegram, they have a low levels of trust. Okay, this is something that has been there. So basically, guys, understand this particular thing that when we talk about the news, okay, or when we talk about the media, media is a very important pillar of the uh, democracy media has been called as the fourth pillar of a democracy so we have the judiciary legislature and executive which are the three pillars and the fourth pillar is the free media so media plays a very very important role 
and in this particular direction we need to make sure that the perception towards the news also needs to be positive and for that particular thing there is a need of a strong media ethics there is a need of a strong code of media ethics that is needed so that is all about this particular article and now we'll move to the next article india's export to china growing faster than inbound shipments okay so guys recently the data has been given by the government okay and so basically uh, the commerce ministry has given the data and in this particular data it is being provided that india china trade relations are improving in favor of india okay now let's understand this particular article little bit in more detail by the way it will be important for gs paper number 2 gs paper number 2 india china trade relations and more importantly it will be relevant for the gs paper number 3 state of india's external sector external trade state of india's external trade now guys just a minute okay so uh, when we talk about the india and china india and china their trade relations are actually very uh, their trade relations are actually very deep and uh, the india china trade relations they are huge now in the past few years in the past few years actually the trade relations has increased even more okay in this particular direction first of all guys first of all india's trade relations has increased from 119 billion dollar in financial year 15 our trade relations has increased to just a minute just a minute okay so when we talk about the india china trade relations first of all china is one of the largest trading partner of india and the trade inflows between both the countries have improved successfully successively over the past few years okay so the trade has increased from 72 billion dollars in 2014-15 to around 115 billion dollars in financial year 2022 so there is a kind of a 59% increase into the trade between the two countries that is the india and china 59% increase in trade is there okay this is something but guys in this particular direction it has always been provided that india is a india is at a receiving end when the trade relations have increased actually india's import dependence on the china has increased for this particular thing if you remember in 2020 even the government started the atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan and as per this atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan government provided this particular thing that the trade depend that the dependence on the china is to be removed okay now first of all understand this particular thing that when we talk about guys when we talk about the india china trade relations i told you that the trade relations have increased by 59% but let's see little bit more on these trade relations okay now when we talk about the india's exports to china india's exports to china india's exports to china have increased from around 11.9 billion dollar in financial year 2015 to around 21.25 billion dollar okay last year so there is a 78.1% in increase in india's exports to china so this is a very good thing that india's exports are increasing at the same time guys imports have also increased so imports was around import was around 60.4 billion dollar in 2015 and they have increased to around 94 billion now you see this thing you don't need to remember this data in absolute numbers just you can remember it in little bit of a percentage just i am telling you the numbers to give you a better perspective so basically what has happened imports have also increased and imports have increased by 55.8% so basically india's imports are increasing by the rate of 55.8% and exports are increasing by the rate of 78% so government had provided this particular thing that it is something positive that is happening our exports have increased more than our imports our exports have increased more than our imports which is something good and actually the atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan is showing some of the positive fruits now you see this thing just in one year it will not happen that india's import dependence will come to zero no over the period is what we need to do we need to increase our exports and we need to reduce our imports okay that is something that we are moving now when we talk about the major imports coming from china what are the major imports that come from the china so major items of import are electronic components computer hardware okay 
uh, and peripherals the components that are used into the computing telecom instruments organic chemicals industrial machinery for dairy chemicals allied products electronic instrument bulk drugs all these kind of a things are being used they are the things which are being imported from the china now in the past what has been the things that have worked and why the uh, basically the exports of india has improved there are many reasons for that particular thing and the first is the production linked incentive scheme now in the past we have discussed the pli scheme multiple number of times where the government is providing the benefit of 2 to 5% for the incremental sales so we have brought the pli schemes to more than 14 sectors now so it has worked and therefore what has happened the domestic manufacturing in india has improved okay moreover we have also brought the technical regulation for the toys electrics electronics chemicals fertilizers now this particular thing is keeping the sub standard checks in control and many of the sub standard products that were coming from china they have reduced so therefore the import growth has not been very much high so this is something that has worked into the favor of india and actually india and actually now india needs to leverage these things more and we need to india need to leverage these things more and india need to focus that how further the dependence onto the china can be reduced so this is all about this particular article and now we'll move to the next article ending dominance ending dominance so guys this particular article is talking about the recent order that has been given by the competition commission of india the fine that has been slapped onto the google so the article is talking about that the fine that has been slapped but actually guys rather than reading this particular article i have discussed this entire issue on 24th of october that is the day before yesterday so on the 24th of october newspaper analysis we have discussed this entire issue where i have explained that what are the issues the first the second the third and fourth what are the reasons for which the google has been fined and we have also explained that what are the anti trust anti trust cases that are there and all such kind of a things we have discussed okay so i'll suggest you that you please visit the 24th of october newspaper analysis and please see this particular video if you have not seen this particular issue up till now and if you don't know about it however if you have seen it then no need to go again and read the same article okay so i'll suggest you that if you want you can watch this 24 october discussion that we have discussed from the very scratch then now we'll moving to the mains practice question for the today okay so guys the mains practice question for today it reads discuss the measures taken by government which can help in controlling the stubble burning and air pollution in north india okay now this is actually a 15 marker question and guys this question is directly from the article that we have discussed so please try to write the answers and try to comprehend the uh, try to uh, uh, use the innovative dimensions in this particular write up so that is all guys for the today now guys we come to an end to the today's newspaper discussion and before that let's take one doubt that has been there uh, sir a small question from last topic about people's faith in news sources what is the sample uh, what is the sample space for such conclusion sir i mean how many people were surveyed to conclude the same okay so basically the sample size the sample size were was 7463 citizens okay so nearly you can say that the 7500 citizens were surveyed and they were surveyed from the 19 states 19 states and actually this uh, sample size was good why because the variety of the people that was surveyed it was very much good so the people rural people rural urban rich poor young old men women non literate educated all types of people have been surveyed so therefore the sample size is good in terms of number as well as in terms of the diversity the variety of the people that were asked the questions okay so upmanyu i hope that your question is now clear so that is all guys about that today and guys uh, uh, just i want to say one thing that if you are liking the video please do uh like the video please do leave your comments and please do share the initiative guys always understand this particular thing that the viability of this initiative will only depend on the support that you people will show okay so only on that particular thing the viability of the video will uh, depend so i hope that you will be supporting the initiative okay so that is all for today and now we'll be meeting tomorrow till then please take care of yourselves thank you so much